All right, today's review video will be on the classification of matter, looking at elements, compounds, and mixtures. <clears throat> what I've found through the years is that even the best of students have a difficult time with this, because we're dealing with things that are on the atomic or molecular level, things that are too small to even imagine. We start off with the elements. Elements are the simplest form of matter. They can't be broken down into anything simpler. All the compounds, all the mixtures, they're made of elements. What makes an element unique is that it's a form of matter with only one type of atom. If we could see inside copper, we would see nothing but a bunch of identical copper atoms. If we could see inside sulfur, we'd see nothing but a bunch of identical sulfur atoms. Single type of atom, that's what makes it an element. Compounds are made of elements. A compound is a chemical combination of two or more elements. Now, chemical combination means they combine together to make something new. The compound is not the same as the elements that make it up. Some of the examples we looked at in class included table salt, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride is made out of the elements sodium and chlorine. Table salt is nothing like sodium and chlorine. You can see it's kind of a white, almost transparent crystal. Whereas sodium is your typical metal, silver and shiny. Chlorine is a gas, it's green. The table salt looks nothing like it. Its physical properties are very different. Its chemical properties are different too. It reacts nothing like sodium and chlorine. Sodium reacts very vigorously in water, catches fire, even explodes if you've got enough. Chlorine is a toxic gas. Table salt is none of the above. Totally stable, put it in water, doesn't blow up, smell it, you won't die. Very different than the elements that make it up. What makes a compound a pure substance is there's only one type of molecule there. If you look inside table salt, sodium chloride, we see sodium and chlorine atoms. We see two different atoms there. But when we look, we see only one type of particle. We see one compound. Sugar, again, another compound. Sugar made of the elements carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Again, sugar is nothing like carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. The oxygen and hydrogen are gases at room temperature. Sugar is a solid. Carbon is, depending on the form you're looking at, most of the forms black whereas sugar is not. So very different chemically and physically from the elements that make it up. It is unique. It is a compound. Again, when we look inside, we see more than one type of atom. We see oxygen atoms. We see hydrogen atoms. We see carbon atoms. But we only see one type of molecule. An element is a substance composed of one type of atom, a compound, is a substance composed of one type of molecule. And again, side by side, we can see the difference. Here's our sulfur, nothing but sulfur atoms, one type of atom. There's our table salt, sodium chloride, one type of molecule. We mix these elements and compounds together, we make a mixture. A mixture is a physical combination of more than one pure substance. Physical means you're not making anything new. We call it salt water for a reason, because when you combine salt and water together, it's still just salt and water. There are two types of mixtures that we need to know. This first slide represents the homogeneous mixture. The prefix homo means same. What we're talking about here is it looks the same throughout. If you look at a piece of sterling silver, every little bit of it looks the same. If you look at salt water, every little bit of it looks the same. It looks very uniform. We can also say it means same concentration. We find the same concentration of salt and water throughout that mixture. In the sterling silver, we find the same concentration of silver and copper throughout that mixture. These types of mixtures don't settle. The particles are too small to see. They look very uniform. You never have to shake them, you never have to stir them. Very different from the heterogeneous mixtures. Prefix hetero means different. And again, we can look at it a couple different ways. It looks different 
when we look around it. We can see different things in that mixture. It's the soil, you can see different layering in the soil. You see the different layers, different is heterogeneous. It can also mean different concentrations. If you looked inside muddy water, you'd see clumps of dirt. Inside that dirt, you have a high concentration of dirt. Outside, a low concentration. Different concentrations. Again, hetero means different. Heterogeneous mixtures, you can often see the separate parts. We can see the different layers. You can see the roots. You can see different things. Even with this muddy water, if you looked at it very closely, you can see the bits of dirt floating around in it. You can see the different things. They will settle. They will separate. If you let this muddy water sit in the counter overnight, by morning you'd find most of your dirt's gone to the bottom. Most of it has settled out. Again, side by side, the homogeneous mixture like salt water, the salt and the water is evenly spread out. It's the same concentration everywhere. Homo means same, same concentration. It looks the same no matter where we look. The heterogeneous mixture, our muddy water here, again, it looks different. You might not be able to see it in this video, but you can actually see clumps of dirt floating in it. You can see the different things if you look closely. We have different concentrations. High concentration of water here, low concentration of water here. Different hetero. Little flow chart to help you remember how matter is classified. Matter can be broken down into two things, substances and mixtures. A substance is a single form of matter. A mixture is two or more forms of matter. A single substance, more than one substance. Your pure substances are broken down into elements and compounds. An element is one type of atom. Compound will have at least two different atoms in it. One type of molecule. To identify them, elements, look at the periodic table. They're there. If it's on the periodic table, it's got to be an element. For compounds, we can look for two-word names like sodium chloride. No element has a two-word name. We can look at endings, I-D-E, A-T-E, I-T-E. Those are typical endings for compounds. The mixtures are broken down into homogeneous and heterogeneous. Again, the homogeneous ones, they mix evenly. They don't settle or separate. You cannot see the individual substances. It looks very uniform. For the heterogeneous, they mix unevenly. They will normally settle or separate and you can see the individual substances. Now one of the things we may learn later on, homogeneous mixtures, two types that we can see. Alloys, that's a mixture of metal and one other substance. They are homogeneous because when you look at something like sterling silver, you can't see the individual substances. They don't settle or separate. It looks very uniform. Solutions are another. This one we definitely will learn a little later on. A solution involves dissolving. Something is dissolved in another substance, like salt water. The heterogeneous mixtures, colloids, are heterogeneous mixtures. They look very homogeneous at first, but they can settle and separate over time. They're often white in color because of the way they scatter light. Mayonnaise is a colloid, and you know when mayonnaise goes bad, it separates. The oil starts to come to the top. Suspension is a much more common type. This is like your muddy water. It's a liquid that contains some large particle that eventually will settle out. Italian salad dressing, that's also a suspension. As usual, if you have any questions, feel free to post them on the wall or send a message, and we'll get to them.